Hello, folks. We are now going to be talking about conifer reproduction. So, without further ado, let's get back to that PowerPoint. So, gymnosperms. The dominant generation of gymnosperms is the sporophyte generation. The metophyte generation is so greatly reduced it occurs inside the cones and is hardly noticed. So, probably not notice ones. You're going to notice a lot of less than uh, creative names on this one. So, once a gym, pardon me, once a gymnosperm has undergone fertilization, it produces a zygote just like in us, so nothing's changed too much here, which undergoes some mitosis to form your embryo, again, pretty familiar still, which then undergoes mitosis to form a seed, not quite like us, but still pretty familiar at this point, you know, that wasn't really unexpected, and uh, which seeds undergo a whole bunch of mitosis and turn into your sporophyte, so your Diploid generation is the entire plant here, so they're more like us than uh, our mosses in that respect. They're going to produce both male and female cones. The ones that you're most familiar with are the female cones because they're great big ginormous typical, they're what you think of when you think pine cone, okay? Those little tiny things that you might have wondered about and been like, huh, look like tiny pine cones that never quite turn into mature pine cones. What's their deal? Yeah, those are the male pine cones. So the female pine cones produce megasporangia, and the male pine cones produce microsporangium. So uh, it's kind of a theme in life uh, that if you're reproducing with two cells, you want one to be big and then to and to have all the important stuff and one to be small because we need one to be mobile. And so it makes no sense for both of them to have all the important, have like, you know, mitochondria and all the other junk inside the cell. Why not just have one have all the important junk and one be stripped down to only genes? That way it travels real well. So a lot of things do that, ourselves included. So your megasporangia produce, guess what? Megaspores! Your microsporangia produce microspores. Again, not very creative names here. Anyways, once they are producing these spores, that is when they have undergone meiosis. So these spores, are haploid. Whenever you see the word spore, go away. Whenever you see the word spore, think haploid. So they undergo mitosis, the megaspores produce archegonia, and then eggs inside of those, which undergo mitosis. Microspores undergo mitosis to produce wing cells. So little tiny dumbo ears that they will use to float away on the breeze. Interestingly enough, pollen actually has very specific shapes, especially for pine trees. They have very specific geometry, and the female cones are also built a very specific way. And it's such that they have aerodynamics that only pine tree pollen of the correct male uh, tree will float in and land on the egg of the correct female. So if you've got a Douglas fir over here and a balsam over here, balsam over here, that's producing uh, pollen, and it floats over here by our Douglas fir, since it's not the right species, it's just gonna blow clean through that pine cone. And it'll only come to rest on a pine cone if it's the right kind, because the way those chambers are shaped. Anyways, there's a bunch of YouTube videos out there on it, I'm sure, if you want to find out more. Um, or you can become a scientist in pine trees. They would love to have more people working on that, I'm sure. It's not like the most top topic um, in most instances, but they are very cool. You should be interested in them. 
from the oldest organisms on Earth. So gymnosperms have male uh, cones and female cones. We've already been over that. Microsporangia producing male spores. Microspores, meiosis. They turn into pollen grains. So female, male. So let's look at some of these staminate cones. So you're going to see a bract, and then on the underside of those bracts, a little sac full of microspor uh, microspores. That sac is called the microsporangia. So let's go ahead and take a look at our real life example of that. There we go. Now it's all cut up. All right, so some of these are a little bit damaged, but here's a good one. So here is our microsporangium full of microspores. This is the male, so the staminate cone. So this is the male reproductive structure for our gymnosperms or pine trees, okay? Let's go back to our PowerPoint. Be pretty similar, colors are a little different. So next up, let's look at some pollen. So again, produced by the males. This is after they have undergone some mitosis to produce these wing cells. And later on, they're going to undergo uh, some more mitosis to produce uh, a tube cell and your sperm, your tube cell, and it looks like a little Dumbo trunk coming out of this end, and it transports the sperm to the egg once they've landed nearby the egg. It's, of course, a temporary structure. Those are all of these, which, seem, which makes that seem a little bit extraneous. Anyways, let's go back to our microscope. All right, you can see they've got a bunch of uncolored um, pollen here. Not sure how or why they did that other than just to make it look cool. Anyways, let me just go ahead and pick one. So, Aha, uh -huh, that's a pretty good looking one. I see these in lake water and pond water all the time. And so this is your mature pollen grain. These two little Dumbo ears are the, here, Actually, I suppose he looks a little bit more like Mickey Mouse. Anyways, but your ears are going to be the wing cells. That's just kind of why I like calling them Dumbo ears a little bit better. Anyways, and on the inside, they're producing sperm. And there will also be a tube cell here, which will pop out, form your little Dumbo trunk, and carry those sperm to the egg. We're also about to look at. Real quick, back to our PowerPoint. So inside the female cone, megasporangia produce megaspores via meiosis. Megaspores develop into the female gametophyte, which produces eggs in the archegonia. So your ovulate cone, which is female. So ovulate, female. Staminate male. 
You might notice that on these, your megasporangium are on top of the bracts, not underneath them. So let's go ahead and take a look at our real life example of that. Here we go. So here is our pine ovulate cone, so female. So you see our bract, our little stem holding up the reproductive stuff is underneath the megasporangia. So that's what this entire structure is here, which is going to produce megaspores, which are going to turn into eggs. So you see the pollen is going to float right on down there, land somewhere in here, produce a little tube cell, which is going to carry it into the egg. So let's take a look at a pine ovule. So an archegonium with an egg forming inside of it. Here we go. So it's upside down, that's all right. Here's our pine ovule. So this is our archegonium in here. This is our egg. Go ahead and snap a picture of that real quick. And get back to our PowerPoint. So open up, bring the pollen to the female cone. That's why they need wing cells. Forms pollen to the generative cell will undergo mitosis producing sperm which go down the pollen tube like a little slide all the way down to the egg and fertilize it. And that was all for gymnosperms. So come back for the next video for angiosperms.